Today, we're going to go over how to change the colour of anything. Like this. This will be a beginner friendly tutorial on how to change the colour of almost anything within your frame. We'll be going over these two clips that you can see. Here are the before and the afters. And we will be using DaVinci Resolve. And you should be able to do this on the free version of DaVinci Resolve as well. So we're in DaVinci and I'm going to show you two different ways that you can shift the colour of almost anything. So if I move myself out of the way, we're going to find, I have this clip over here and you're going to see these nodes already up here, but don't worry about these nodes. We're going to forget about these nodes. Today we're just going to solely concentrate on shifting colour. So to begin with, you're going to press Option or Alt S and you're going to make a new serial node like this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our curves, which is over here, right here. And then you're going to go over to your hue versus hue curves, which is here. So you're going to see this little icon here, and we're going to go over to this area right here. And then what you can do is go over to your grass that we're wanting to shift. And I'm going to select this grass right here, because in this clip, I'm going to want to shift the color of the grass to maybe a bit more of a pinky tone um, as seen in the clip at the beginning. So what I'm going to do is click on this grass and you're going to see three points being made on the curve right here. So if I was to move this up or down, you're going to quickly see that the color shifts immediately. And this is probably the fastest way to shift the color of anything. So as I can see, as you can see, sorry, I've shifted the color to maybe a more pinky tone. And we have this clip right here, which looks pretty cool. One thing that I forgot to mention is that you can adjust your refinement. So if I was to shift this selection, let's call it, a bit more to the left, select more of the yellows, because now we've selected the greens, you can see now the actual yellows are being affected and everything now is pink. So if I was to shift this up or down, almost all those colors, bearing me who's in the middle, is being shifted. So we don't want that, we only want the greens to be affected. So if I was to Command Z and go back, you can see we have the shifting color, which looks pretty cool. The only problem is I don't have full control over my colors in this clip. I can adjust the hue and maybe I can go over to my next curve, select the same color and I can adjust the saturation like this. And I can go over to my next curve and select the color and I can adjust the luminance of this clip. And that's one way of doing it. That's a really good way of doing it. However, my favorite way of doing this is if we was to remove this node and we start again, we can go over to balance, press, press Alt or Option S and we'll make a new node. I'll rename this just for now, we'll call it Hue. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our qualifier, which is over here. And again, we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to select our greens. Now, when you press this, nothing will happen. So what you have to do is actually press Shift H. So if I press Shift H, you can see that I have selected the greens, but I have also selected myself. And that is because sometimes this, this qualifier doesn't select the doesn't select colors in the most accurate way. So I've got to determine a little bit where which colors I'm actually wanting to actually select. So I know I'm wanting to select the greens, so I can actually go over to my hue and I'll only drag it over the greens. And as you can see, the eye in the middle. I'm no longer selected and only the greens are really selected. And I can refine my selection by increasing the blur radius, which will kind of feather my selection and also increase the denoise. And this will again just feather the selection and just make it a bit more smoother. I can press Shift H again and go back to my original image. And then what I can do is go over to my hue at the bottom right here and then I can simply drag this hue up and down and the problem you can see now is that a lot of the yellows are still being affected therefore what we need to do is go over to my hue and shift the center of this hue even more towards the right until we get this lovely selection between the grass well the the stem of the plants and the actual flowers of the plants and this is looking Pretty cool. The selection is something that I'm happy with. What I can do now is actually take the clip in any direction that I want. I can easily change the luminance. I can easily change the hue, the saturation. I can even shift really a lot of new colors that I can't really shift using the hue versus hue curve. I'll quickly show 
right now. So say if we go back to our original, we can shift, say if we wanted a bit more of a, a bluey stem, we can have it like this. We can shift the saturation, we can make it a lot more saturated like this. But for now, what I want to do is probably shift it more towards that pink, like here. Even if you wanted the whole, if I wanted the whole image to be all yellow, I can go over to my hue, shift this down, and you can see I've tried to match it, but it's not completely matched. I can go over to my saturation, increase, actually I decrease saturation a little bit, then go over to my gain and shift yellows into the colors like so, and really get those colors to match up. And then once they've matched up, you've got this really cool, almost monotone looking image. So with this, as you can see, it's a lot easier to shift color compared to the curves, but the curves is so much faster than using this method. But I often find myself referring to this method. So I'm gonna reset everything here. I'm gonna go over to my hue, shift this towards the pinks like so. I might drop the gain down a little bit to darken them up a little bit, or I can brighten them up if I wish to do so. And I can increase the saturation like so, and I can increase my gain a little bit, shift my hue, and just for now, we're just gonna get this really wild looking selection. And what you can do is once you've done your color separation, which we've done with the yellows and the pinks, we can then go over to another node, which you can press again, option or alt S. In this case, I've created a new node here, which is called your global look. And this global look is really just gonna help everything just like mesh together and just kind of give that color separation a bit more of a i'm going to call it a realistic type of look um, but it'll just help blend everything quite nice so i'm simply just going to go over to my offset now and just push in some warmth and as you can see that warmth push into the oranges just really helps just blend everything really nice and you can continue going using curves and radial filters to fill in this bottom bit over here crazy thing is you can do this in the free version of davinci resolve as well in this next clip, we have this awesome A90 Supra, and I'm gonna show you the exact same process of how you can change the color of anything. Don't worry about this node tree. This is a node tree called Digifilm, and this is basically the same node tree structure that I use to color grade almost all my clips, because it's I can get a really awesome grade in just a matter of clicks. So the first thing I'm gonna do is we already have this layer mixer node, as it's called in this uh, power grade, but essentially, you're going to forget all of that. I'm just going to turn this node on and we're going to change the color of this car. So again, I'm going to use my color fire. I'm going to press the green, press shift H and you're going to see the screen is affected. Again, if my selection isn't clean, I can either go to my qualifier minus button and select the areas that I don't want. So I don't want the sky, the floor to be selected. And as you can see, it does a pretty good job in selecting the colors that I don't want, but you can overdo it. So I'm going to press command Z, maybe deselect the floor and then do it manually basically. So I can increase this, I can increase saturation here, increase the luminance, decrease the luminance ever so slightly and then bring up the saturation. And here I've got a pretty nice selection. I can press shift H and as you'll be able to see now, I can go over to my hue and really shift the color. So I can go to a more pink color. I have an orange color, a yellow, a green, and even a blue. If you want to shift the color to be like a white color or a black color, the easiest way to shift color to more towards a white is simply using going over to the saturation and turning it to zero. You can do that, but the only problem with this one is I've actually done a grade already. So if I was to turn off my global look, you can see it's white. And then if you wanted to make that white a lot more brighter, I can go over to my gain and I can actually, wrong one, I can go over to my gain and I can actually increase this. And you can see we have a before and an after and we have a white color. Black is a little bit more difficult in the sense that if you don't have a perfect selection, it's really going to show up. And that's the same with white in a sense. But if I was to try and make this black, I'd go over to my gain again and I'd really just punch that in. As you can see around, it's starting to get really blocky. And that's when you can actually do create masks around the car or you can do a magic mask like so and you'll get a perfect selection around your car and not, nothing else will be affected. And therefore I can go back to my shift H and then I can shift in any color I want and nothing else really will be affected. 
So if you wanted to get something like a brown color, which is difficult, you can go over to your hue, go over initially to an orange, decrease the saturation a little bit, but as you can see, it's still an orange. But if you understand your hues and your color wheel, you know that brown is basically a dark color of orange. So therefore, I can go to my gain and darken this up, and now you get this really nice chocolatey brownie color. And I can keep decreasing my saturation, and you can choose that perfect hue of brown that you desire. So those are some more of the tricky colors that you can get, but I just want to showcase a bit more of how you can get some of those type of colors. So those are the two ways that you can basically shift the color or the hue of anything in a frame. It can actually transform the way any of your clips look. And sometimes you just could have a little bit of fun. And understanding these techniques will just help you improve as a colorist, as a filmmaker, as a photographer. Um, and the more you know, the more things you can implement and you can keep growing. So yeah, I hope this was somewhat helpful. Thank you.